An old friend is back in this episode, one you may remember from a previous series. Let's take a look at how to do my storage system in open computers. going and welcome back to the series about rails. Now in the last episode we worked on the cool features to add into my haunted house which covered off how to get the gas noises and the ghost cart which you, could, which you could just see in that video going around in front of you so that it just makes it a little bit more spooky. And there was that small video after it of the ride on the ghost train which you guys seem to have loved but in this episode for anyone who's been watching long enough you guys would have seen that in Qantas I set up a storage system in open computers and I've been getting a lot of questions on how that's now set up with the code changes that are applied and I thought in this episode we'd pull that back out show you how to set up the basic system and then we can use that for our storage as well as maybe extend it in the future so that we can do other cool things with it. So, let's get started. Okay, we're back here in Warnerview, which is one of the very first stations we set up. And I thought it would be really nice to have the storage system close by. And I thought initially we could put on this building, which has the control room just down below. But then I thought there's this area over here, which we just jump over here. Uh, there's this area which has been left to rot and decay as part of the Lost City's design. And I thought what we could actually do is use something around here, make a new building for our storage. And I'm thinking something Minecraft related because I think that would be quite cool. So the first thing I'll do is I'm going to clean this up, create a something to go in this space, and we're back in a moment. Okay, so there you go. I've cleaned up a little bit of area. I'm going to have to do a bit more work on this piece because it's sort of a mess. But I've cleaned up area and built up a structure. Now obviously I'm going for the idea of a chest here. Uh, and I wanted to have some windows at the top. So I made the top half of that chest into uh, brown stained glass to try and go with it. And it actually reminds me of a mod back in the 1.7 days called Crystal Chests, where the whole chest was crystal. So I've made the whole thing glass at the top. And as you can see, there's nothing actually inside there at the moment. Uh, but it is a double chest, and that's what I was going for. What I was thinking, inside for storage, I'm going to probably put a, a layer along here, probably just below the basalt there, and possibly put in some storage drawers. So if we go into here, and we find storage drawers. This is what I used in the original episode, and I'll probably keep using it because it works really well. So if I'm thinking probably giving enough room to have some stuff behind it. Let's put one there, and we'll just keep this going. Oops, I'd like to make... I'd like to use those. Apparently disappeared. Not sure what happened there. Uh, so long. Oh no, that's not the same. The same ones. What have I done wrong? Uh, we want one of these. Okay. So that can go along here. And probably won't have one there. We'll probably put that there. We will put a slave in the middle there. So that this lot can talk to this lot without having storage in there. We'll continue this right around and up. So we'll probably have it. Uh, we'll probably go maybe up to there. Yeah, that should be good. And we'll copy that right along here and right along, leaving one gap along each side. Uh, so what I'm going to do though is I'll put this lot in. And I will put in the, the second floor, and I'll be back in a moment. Okay. So, I, as you can see, I've put all of these storage chests in now, and they're connected up to slaves. I even thought I'd put another level, just a smaller level in the middle here, so it looks more like a, a library type idea. Uh, put some letters on the wall, and our 
flaw in the middle. Now, for some reason, I like having flaws of holes in them. Uh, not sure why that is. I just think that would be cool. Because uh, you can look down here and you can see all the stuff in your chests. Really nice. And of course, there's nothing up here because this is just really for show. And this is where we'll put all the open computer stuff. Now, what I've also done is I've run the cabling down to the uh, main line for the cables all the way over there. Uh, as you can see, there is the draw controller there, and there are slave controllers everywhere else. But what I thought we'd do now, though, of course, is once we've got that piece set up, uh, I'm going to uh, set up a rack. Uh, because in the original Qantas episode, I used a computer. And it really doesn't matter what you use for the computer. So I'm going to put that there. Uh, and that way the power will come into here. We're going to put in a, a screen just above it. Uh, probably about the same size as that gap, I would say. Now I'm using tier, a tier 3 screen here. Uh, but you could use a tier 2 or something else. Uh, it's really up to you. Just remember that a tier 1 is limited to black and white, and it is a much smaller area. I'm going to go in and use a server. So if we go into here, and we're going to put in a EEPROM, which is not a double. Uh, we're going to have ourselves a, a graphics card. Now, you'll see here I've got tier 2. This lets us have bigger text in a tier 3. But it's really up to you if you want to make something else. You can use tier 3 graphics card. Just remember that if you want to fully utilize a tier 3 screen, you do need to have a tier 3 graphics card. And the same with tier 2. If you're going to use tier 2 screen, you'll need to have a tier 2 graphics card. Uh, we'll have a, a CPU. Now, the faster the CPU, the better. So we're going to use a tier 3. Especially because we've got so many storage chests. It does take a quite a bit of time and processing power. So the more power we've got, the better. Put some RAM in there. We're going to put a hard drive in. Uh, and we'll put a network card. And that should give us everything we need there. Let's grab that, stick that into there. Uh, we'll stick that into there. Connect it to the top for the screen. And for some reason, it actually clicked to my imagery, which is a bit strange. Uh, make sure everything's there. No, it's not. So, not what I wanted. That we'll put this guy in there. We will now hopefully have our stuff in it. Yes, it does. Cool. Turn them on. And and it beeps. Why did it beep? Let's find an analyzer. Probably because there's no OS installed. No little medium found. Yep, that's what it is. Because I need to install on the hard drive here, I need to put the BIOS, so I'm just going to do that, and I'll be back in a moment. I forgot all about this drive, didn't I? Okay, so the OS is all installed now, now of course if you haven't seen me set up a computer before, you do need a keyboard, uh, so you can interact with the screen, which I forgot to add, you'll need to have a disk drive and a uh, open OS disk, type install, and let it do its thing. Uh, but what we will do now, is we'll just head into the server again. Now you don't need to do this, you can copy and paste if you want. But I'm going to add an internet card into this machine as well. So that we can quickly grab the code from the uh, GitHub location that's currently located in. You can of course grab it from the description or copy and paste it if you want. But what we're going to do though, you go wget and then paste the address for the code. So of course this is a link directly to the source code on my GitHub page. Go so press enter and it will download the thing. Save it to iFace.law and there is a small change you need to do to this code. If we go into edit iFace.law just down here under miscellaneous config uh, obviously we've got our communications port here which is the port things communicate, they need to be the same. You probably can leave it the way it is. This is the timeout for the screensaver. Probably the most important thing, and the thing that I realized was probably confusing people, is in Qantas, at the end, I had the code 
set up to run on a tablet, and of course a computer back at the main base was doing all the configuration. So you had to have a tunnel card or a network card in the system for it to find out and be able to communicate with the, the master. But what I've now done is I've changed the code a little bit, so this local modem equals local will actually say that the machine is running locally and it will communicate with itself and it doesn't require a network or a tunnel card to operate in any way. That's pretty much the only change you'll need to make in this file. The other thing we need to grab is the slot code which is this one, once again, just copying from the GitHub page. And in here... So there are also some changes in this file that you need to make. I have added a lot more documentation in, so it's, it should be a lot easier to work out what you're doing. It explains where we're setting things up. And of course, down here, we've got our various settings which will change depending on how you set things. So at the refresh time, which is how often to scan the inventory. So if things are changing on a regular basis and you're not touching them, this will actually rescan and update. Storage side, of course, is the side with the uh, storage in it, which we need to put it in now. So we're going to put this probably on, let's put it, uh, so this, of course, will be left. We'll put it on the... Um, Put it down here, just connected to this guy. Actually, no, we need a transposer. I haven't put the transposer in yet. Uh, where is our transposer? So we need to put a transposer. Uh, probably there. And what we'll do is we'll stick the controller under it in this case. So it'll be test, it'll be connected to this. Now we do need to use a, a slave controller here, so we'll just put one of those in there. Now, of course, it'll be able to read it. That is the downside there. So we'll change our storage here to down. Now, of course, that is based on the transposer, not based on the computer. So you can have the computer completely different and it won't matter. The next thing we need to do is the test. So the chest, of course, is something we need to have in our inventory. Now, if you wanted to, you can use the ender chest or anything else. In this game, I've only got normal chests, so I haven't got. I didn't want to have mass transport because, it's, of course, it's all train based. So our tre a chest is where we would take items out of. So we'll put that there, which means it's in front. It needs to be, of course, be able to open it. So we're going to leave that as front, as it's shown on there. And the EC side. Is actually the in the chest side for crafting. So this is the one that does all the magic if you're going to craft things up or trans thing, transport things around the base. Because the transposer will only talk to items around it. So it could talk to, uh, if it's below it, and next to it, it could transpose, it can move stuff into those areas. But if it was coming from over there, it has to be done in a different way. So in this case, we're going to just put that on top. And this chest can't be opened, obviously. Uh, which is fine because we're only using this for crafting stuff and we don't need to open it. Obviously, you would normally have an ender chest here to be able to transport it and you have another ender chest over by your your furnaces and another one over by your crafters and that kind of stuff. I'm not using any of the auto crafting in here, so what we've got here is fine. So we'll set that to the top. The EC reserved return value that is here is how many slots are are dedicated in our chest for returning items. So by default, it would use the last five. One, two, three, four, five. So anything that is placed into these slots will be returned when they're placed in there. Everything else is used for communicating and passing items between other ender chests. And of course, the comms port needs to match that the one we put on the interface. Uh, and that should be all the config item you need here. So now, let's just double check that it boots up. No primary transposer available. Let's make sure that the server is configured. Okay, I'm not sure why that's not showing up. Let me just investigate. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so there's the transposer. Cool. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what was going on there. It, 
I'll just move the rack and the server down one so it's actually sitting above or below the transposer and coming up with the same cable because for some reason even though it's showing a second line here it wasn't actually talking with that line no idea why uh, but right, so I've now moved it we just need to fill this of course back in because I've made a big a bit of a mess um, what we can do, of course, is now we've got a transposer, which we have to run slot items manually. And apparently the player in the chest side is invalid, which means we're actually talking about this guy here. Which possibly means that this guy is not actually inserted as straight. So let's do that and see if it helps. No. Let's grab our analyzer. Click on there. Doesn't help any. Uh, now make sure that we test this. So we'll just go back down to here. We may need to change this, so it may take some fiddling because even though to us look at the front, it's not always. So we'll change this to left. Okay, well that seemed to pick up something, so it's obviously based on being this way. So scanning the items, if you've got a lot of chests like we do, it's going to take a while to scan. Once it's finished, of course, it will dump off into the background, we can then go eye face. And it will bring up a list of items that are in here, obviously nothing in there currently, but there's the interface there. If we go into here and we say, okay, let's return some planks. Uh, we will click up on this button here. It'll return that if we've got it correctly done. It returned it. Cool. It's now back in the storage. And somewhere down in one of these chests. There it is there. And that's pretty much the system set up. If you would like to know how the auto crafting stuff works, please do leave a message down below. Okay, I think I'll leave the episode here. We've now got a storage system and the water view area here looks a little bit prettier. It's still a little overgrown in places, but doesn't get used that often. If you've enjoyed this episode or you like open computers and rails and those types of things, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. But otherwise, have a great day and see ya!